Hello and welcome to the Interactive and Immersive HQ. My name is Marco and in today's video we will dip our toes into GLSL and we will create this easy monochrome effect here. So we are basically rebuilding the monochrome top but we will, we will use GLSL. So in case you don't know what is GLSL, it is the OpenGL shading language and um, the code is executed directly on your GPU, yeah, which has uh, a lot of performance advantages compared to uh, languages that run on a CPU. Because the CPU handles uh, one task after another, while um, the GLSL code runs on your GPU and can handle many tasks at the same time. Okay. So let's have a look first here what we're building. Well, it's actually pretty simple. Um, like you can see, we have our GLSL top here and we can adjust the strength of our uh, grayscale effect. Okay. So then I just delete everything and I will only leave my video input here. Yeah, but you can also use images or whatever for for a top input. And then we just have to connect it to a GLSL top. So here are two, the GLSL and the GLSL multi. Uh, the only difference is that the GLSL top has only three inputs, while the GLSL multi um, has an uh, open amount of inputs. So you can just connect as many uh inputs as you want but because we are only working with one input for now i will just use this here okay when you drop the glsl top uh, you will also see these two dots here down below and there's even a, a third one hidden but we don't need that so the first one here um in here comes our code for our pixel shader and here in this info that, um, yeah, you, you get some infos about the code. Like if you have an error or something, you will get a, a message here. Okay. So we can either right click view and then work here in this, uh, separate window, or you can just activate the viewer and also just work in here. All right. Let's start from scratch. Okay, so first we need to define what is the output of our shader. So let's just make a comment here. Define output color of shader. Now yeah, with these two uh, slashes here, you can create comments. And then we write out the for frag color and the semicolon. So what does it mean? Well, the out just tells our shader like what what will be our um, our output later, yeah. And it will be a vec four, which means uh, this can contain up to four values. So right, it contains four values: red, green, blue, and our alpha. And we just call it frag color because that's just a common thing uh, in GLSL to name your output frag color. Okay, then we need to declare our main function here. So it is called uh, void because it doesn't give any value back. Yeah, and that's also why the brackets here are empty. And then we just need the squiggly bracklets here. And in here we can then write our code. This code gets an executed in an endless loop. Okay, so first we need to grab our input image. So let's make a comment, grab color from input. Yeah, and this is also a vec4, emit color. So we want to grab the texture of our input here, std2 inputs. This is how you tell the JLSL code to uh, check for the inputs. And then because we can connect uh, multiple inputs, we need to specify the index of it. 
which is zero. Yeah, if you would like to grab like a second input here, you put a one here and for the third input a two. Then we need to write v u v dot st close the brackets and a semicolon again. And this vov.st grabs the uv coordinate information. Okay, now we're actually getting to the monochrome part. So the human perception of brightness is a little bit different for each color. And uh, yeah, we just need to define um, that uh, grayscale now. So define grayscale value based on human perception brightness yeah, and i just googled that so red makes up um, 30 percent green 59 percent 59 percent and blue gets interpreted as the darkest with only 11 percent so let's create a float here for our gray so that the 30% is 0.3 times the color red. And then we have um, 0.59 for green. And we have 11% for the color blue. Don't forget your semicolon here. Okay, and then we need to set the final color output. So the shader knows what, uh, what it has to output now. And so we need to define freq color is a vec4 and then we need we need to put the rgb and a value and because we calculated that now we can put three times gray and color dot a for the alpha to keep the original alpha and we need to close our code with these squiggly brackets again okay let's see Okay, we get an error here in line six. It says STD to inputs undeclared identifier. Oh yeah, it says STD to D inputs. Sorry, I made a little mistake there. So now it says in line nine. Now we also forget the brackets here. Okay, it works. Yeah, we are getting uh, our monochrome output here, but it would be nice to be able to control uh, the amount of the monochrome effect on our output. And for that, we can use uh, uniforms. So what's a uniform? Uniforms are basically parameters that you can uh, pass into your GLSL code. And to do that, we first need to um, define it uh, in our code. So we can do that now. Declare uniform. And you can do that by writing uniform and then the type of, um, of input. Yeah, um, because we will just use a, uh, like a constant uh, slider. We can use a float value but uh, yeah, for other cases, you can also input um, VEC4 or VEC3 uh, uniforms, yeah, but this time we use a float. And let's call it UTD for Uniform Touch Designer, and then just monochrome. Okay, then we also need to add it here in the, um, in the vectors or like depending on what you want to input yeah you can also input arrays or um, matrices here but we'll just use the 
vectors here because we only have one input that we need. Even though you can add up to four here, we'll just use the first one. So let's write the name UTD monochrome. Okay, now we declared our uniform, but it's not in use yet. So yeah, we need to use it to inter to interpolate between the original color and our grayscale. So let's go here and add a comment. Let's write interpolate between original and grayscale color. Then let's add the vec three here because we have for our red, green, and blue. Yeah, these are three values um, that define our gray color. And let's call this final color. And the final color, and yeah, we can use the function mix here. And it should take our RGB color, and then our gray color that we calculated. And we also need to add our uniform here. So basically it's mixing um, our RGB color with our gray color based on our uh, uniform that we declared here. Also, don't forget your semicolon. Okay, now we just need to change uh, here our final color output because now it's just set to all gray, but we would like to see the uh, monochrome effect based on our um, uniform here. Okay, so for that, still need a VEC4, but we can remove the three grays here and just put final color. And we keep the uh, color alpha from the original image. So let's see, we don't have any errors here. And let's check out, yeah. Now we can adjust the strength of our effect. And of course, you can just add a constant drop here and reference the value here, let's say monochrome strength. We can just drag and drop this on this value here. And now when we adjust the slider here, you can see we can adjust the monochrome effect. All right. So we just dipped our toes into GLSL. Of course, this is probably one of the most simple shaders uh, you can, you can write, but, um, yeah, you can really with GLSL is very powerful and uh, you can create really cool uh, image effects with it. So yeah, keep your eyes open for more tutorials. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.